by 2050, Africa's population is going to double. That in itself is an opportunity and is also a challenge. It's an opportunity in the sense that there'll be more mouths to feed. And therefore, um, young people can be organized and galvanized to see the opportunity behind uh, the trillion dollar industry of agriculture. You know, Africa, although it has a high potential for food security, it has not translated that potential into feeding the people nutritionally. Better nutrition for people is, has to be a foundation stone, not just for their own personal development, but for the development of countries. And the corollary of that is if you have really serious nutritional problems in a country, uh, a country's future is really mortgaged. I mean, it's, 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 it's put at, at risk. We need to be able to push evidence to the right uh, decision makers to ensure that Science is influencing policy and actions across Africa for the benefit of rural farmers and people all over Africa. Africa is on the cusp of a digital revolution. You know, we have the, well, the technologies, we have the information now. I like to think of, of the benefits of deploying artificial intelligence and neural networks in moving Africa into a more resilient decision-making regimen. For example, with nutrition. We need an agricultural sector that's going to drive inclusive economic growth for this continent. We want prosperity for all Africans. And that if we don't have inclusive economic growth, we're going to end up in moments of political crisis. Having an agriculture sector that pays attention to the needs and priorities of different types of men and women across agricultural value chains is also important. We have next to the panel what we call the Malabo Montpellier Forum, which uh, two to three times a year uh, brings high level decision makers at the ministerial level uh, from Africa and their development partners and non-state actors around the reports that the panel prepares and their findings to exchange. The events organized by the forum is the opportunity to um, ensure that leading policymakers have access to the latest evidence, uh, that they have a good understanding of the intricacies, the nuances, uh, the granularity of all the issues around strategic areas of uh, uh, capital importance for African agricultural uh, development, for food security, and for nutrition. The report, instead of analyzing the causes and the, the negative components of nutrition in Africa recognizes that Africa has a significant problem but puts forward the perspective that Africa can solve malnutrition problems and there are solutions that can be applied in many different ways to achieve that and so the seven countries that have been chosen are chosen because they have made a significant contribution. They're not the only African countries that have made significant progress or progress over the millennium development period, but they certainly stand out as those who have made significant improvements in reducing undernutrition. And so if we learn from those and replicate the good lessons from that, we can make a difference. Very high level leadership, political leadership for that. At the highest level of the government, there's a determination to change the face of malnutrition uh, in a country. Then you have a concerted effort across the government to bring different ministries and uh, directors to work together because malnutrition is a multifaceted phenomenon. Then you have specific deliberate interventions that Identify who the vulnerables are. You have uh, investment in fortification of foods. You have education about the quality of food, the available of micronutrients, and better diets. Mm -hmm.